I remember a few years ago, I was at home back in the Bronx. Um, I live with my, I live, for those of y'all who don't know, my family, they're Ghana. They're from Ghana, West Africa. I was born in the Bronx, but every, like I'm first generation. Um, so that's just for some context. I lived with my grandmother, my auntie, my three little cousins, my younger sister, my mother sometimes would come home from work uh, at like every few weeks um, because the job that she lived at, uh, the job that she worked at, she had to like live there. Uh, and I lived with my grandfather and two uncles, all in one New York apartment. That being said, uh, sometimes there was a lot of quarrels, quarrels, however you say that word. Um, and there was one time in particular uh, where an uncle and I were having a bit of a disagreement. And during this time, um, we were like kind of like bickering at each other. But it wasn't like as if like, you know, it was like childish bickering. It was more like we were like, I at least from my, you know, where I was trying to go to, like, I, I don't like to just bicker for bickering's sake, you know. I was trying to get to a resolve. I was trying to understand a situation. And as I thought that we were getting somewhere, my grandmother just starts like yelling at me um, to pretty much like be quiet. And I'm like, grandma, no, I'm just trying to like figure this out because she's like, no, like, don't you know that in our culture, when an adult is talking or when an adult says something like they're just always right, like point blank period whatever it might be and I'm like even if you know like you're like respect like you're respectfully just trying to give them the right information or whatever she's like yes like you know the the younger people and I was like 20 at the time maybe 21 but it was like still it was young or whatever um like yeah the younger people they have to like be quiet or whatever like as an adult is speaking and then I just came out and said well I don't like your culture then like and that probably wasn't the kindest thing to say, but um, at the time, I don't even remember what we were what we were bickering about. But it stuck with me. My grandmother is most likely. I know that she's an ISFJ. Um, I believe that she's a six, um, and so for her, <clears throat> she was getting like she always been this way. Um, even my mother said that like she's always been this type of person that whenever people are having like disagreements and stuff like that then she just feels like it's her responsibility it's her, like she's disrupted so then she's like oh guys guys we just have to please just stop you know like like she just wants everybody to just stop and get along um and i view my grandmother as a peacekeeper i love my grandmother I really do. She she when when she's not in those modes, she's really funny. She's jovial. She's always cooking some bomb food for us. She's just very hospitable. And so this is not to talk trash about my grandmother or anything, but this is something that I notice with her and I had to learn. Um and, and like it was one of like the main times I noticed the difference between peacekeeping and then peacemaking so my grandmother is someone who keeps the peace like I said in that situation because there was some tension that was rising then that was just enough for my grandmother to want it all to be shot down she just wanted it all shut down right away stop bickering and since you're the younger one I'm gonna tell you to be the one to stop bickering I'm not gonna talk to him Kind of like kind of situation, and that wasn't the first time that type of thing has happened. That's happened a lot in our family, and so I see that as sweeping things under the rug. And honestly, now me and that uncle, we don't talk anymore. We don't like he. He honestly pretty much like hates me, <laughs> and that's that's uh, unfortunate. But um, that that's a whole other story uh, for another day. But. I always think back and wonder if we were just able to hash out whatever we were trying to hash out at the time, 
I wonder what would have come out of that conversation. Because sometimes conflict is necessary to arrive at harmony, to arrive at true peace. Um, and that means that you have to get through the conflict in order to arrive at peace. That being said, I've always thought back to that time and ever since, especially, I look at how people deal with conflict. I look at how people deal with, you know, again, creating peace versus keeping peace. There's nothing wrong with maintaining peace, but if you're maintaining peace and there's things that are brewing underneath the surface that you refuse to address, that's a problem. I feel like what my grandmother was doing was keeping peace in the sense that as long as we don't address these issues, as long as we don't start raising our voices with each other, as long as we don't bring these things up, as long as we as long as we continue to keep a smile on our face and just stay out of each other's way, then we're keeping peace. Everything is good. Everything is kosher, two thumbs up, Eva and Ropa, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and I disagree with that. Um, <clears throat> for me, I view myself more as a peacemaker. Even as in ENFJ 9. Um, I believe that, actually, maybe even especially as an ENFJ 9, um, I'd say that that's the case for me. I'm very sensitive to tension. And maybe my grandmother is too. But I realized that her and I, we, 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 we address tension in different ways. So I've said it before in many videos, but a lot of people talk about how FE users um, and Enneagram 9s um, they are conflict avoidant, which is true, but also I like to clarify that at least for me, I'd say that I'm not necessarily conflict avoidant, but more of unnecessary conflict avoidant. So if I feel like our bickering is not going to get anywhere, this is not helpful in any way, like it's just not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and like be like, you know what, this is not working. Let's just stop talking. Um, or I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to like cut it off. <clears throat> but if I do feel like we are getting somewhere, like we're making progress, like, yeah, there's tension being built up. But like by the end, there's going to be a resolve and all of that. And we're getting we're addressing things. We're getting things out the way. And then we're going to be even closer and better now than we were before that's different i see that as peacemaking peacemaking to me is when you're able to when you're able to get involved in all of the nitty gritty and actually take the tension you know be able to understand that hey this is just what's going on you know like all right this is we're going to get into the heat of an argument, the heat of whatever it might be. Some people's feelings might get hurt, you know, but if that's what it's going to take for us to be able to put this all out on the table. All right, let's open up this can of worms and then let's figure out how to clean it. Let's figure out how like and that's another thing for me, too. If you're going to open up a can of worms, then you better have the tools and the supplies and the time necessary to be able to also clean up whatever that kind of worms is about to, you know, explode out onto, you know? You better have the different can that, that you're now about to move the worms into or whatever you're about to do with those worms, <laughs> you better have a plan for it, you know? I'm someone who doesn't really believe in bringing up, you know, um, things that are not necessarily... Uh, like that I do not have a solution for. If I don't have a solution for whatever we are talking about, for whatever we are, whatever I'm about to address, all of that, I don't want to bring it up because then I just sort of feel like, um, like, what's the point? You know, like, it's just going to create tension. It's just going to be, we're just going to sit in sorrow and sadness. If we can't figure this out, if there's no chance of us being able to figure this out together, then what's the point of like judging up 
like all of this. But if I'm going to bring things up, if I'm going to open up a can of worms, then I have a plan. I'm ready to be able to handle that. Maybe my grandmother wasn't ready. Maybe she didn't have the tools. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't even know how to resolve it. Or maybe like that's her idea. Like, OK, as long as I keep the peace for right now, then, you know, but the thing is, she keeps on kicking that can down the road. And so she never, at least to my knowledge, she's never sat down to actually address sides to actually figure out, okay, what's going on over here? Let's resolve this conflict once and for all. Um, and I think that once again, that's peacekeeping. You know, sure, on the surface, it looks like everybody's getting along. But underneath the surface, there's just a lot of tension. There's a lot of things that are just going on that, you know, just a lot of people could probably sense. Um, but for me, I really view myself as someone who takes um, peacemaking seriously. So sure, I will not bring up unnecessary conflict. Like, it, and I will not involve myself in unnecessary conflict. If we're going back and forth over whose fault it is that the juice spilled and whatnot, I'm not about to go back and forth about that. I'm just about to be like, you know what? It doesn't even matter whose fault it is. Let's just clean this up. Leave it alone. We're not gonna. We're not gonna talk about the juice anymore. We're not. We're gonna try to be careful of the juice now. Like, cause what is what is pointing blame gonna do in this situation? How is that gonna help? You know. Let's just all learn from this and be done with it. So I think that this whole point of the video is again difference between peace keeper versus a peacemaker someone who keeps the peace in my opinion is someone who whenever conflict whenever tension whenever uh anything of that nature harmony starts to get disrupted in some way stuff like that is starting to appear then this type of person is like oh no and they start to like panic and they're they're doing everything they can so that we can keep all of this stuff hidden and that's keeping the peace because now nobody's allowed to argue. Nobody's allowed to, you know, bring up issues. You know, let's not talk about politics, you know, at the table. Let's not do this. Let's not do that. Let's, guys, let's just all just get along. You know, let's ignore everything that makes us upset with each other for right now. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's necessary, like, to keep politics away from the table because, again, unnecessary goodness. <laughs> as someone who's keeping the peace like sometimes it's, it's good to have these types of people because it's sometimes unnecessary to bring up politics you know like that's just going to bring up unnecessary conflict why why are we discussing this at the table like what is this what is actually the goal over here you know like is there even actually going to be a result probably not you know so then what's the point so sometimes peacekeeping is good and necessary but there's a lot of times where peacekeeping only sweeps things under the rug and you never get to the nitty gritty of addressing the situation and creating a resolve that'll be able to help people to grow and to understand what the problems are and where things went wrong. And then being able to grow from that and have a tighter bond at the end and how to deal with such issues, how to understand each other. I think that's where peacemaking comes in. And peacemaking is a lot more work than peacekeeping. Peacemaking, you have to get in there. You have to be able to suffer through the conflict, whether you're involved or whether you're being the mediator for it. You have to be able to listen to it. You have to be able to understand what both sides, all parties are saying, and then what they're not saying. And then you have to be able to address these things and you have to be brutally honest. And brutal honesty does not mean that you are just saying things to hurt the person. Brutal honesty is more of, at least the way that I see it, it's making sure that whatever that you're saying is completely honest, but your delivery, your delivery won't be what hurts people. Just what maybe the truth of the matter might be. I think that's what tact is. If you allow yourself to deliver the truth but you make sure that your delivery of the truth is okay and it's only the truth itself that might hurt someone, I think that's different, you know? So, yeah, sometimes you might have to tell your close friend, like, yeah, honestly, 
you were being a jerk. Like that's 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 just a point blank period and you need to get that under control. Like this is a this is a character flaw right here. Like you were doing this and that's why homeboy over here, boom boom boom. You have to say these things and then that person has to be open to hearing you out and seeing that you're only saying all this because you care about them and you're trying to have a resolve so that you don't have to deal with this issue anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's peacemaking. And again, it takes a lot more work. Um, but I want to encourage those of us who peace keep to start transitioning into peacemaking and knowing when it's necessary. Knowing when you can have the time to be able to do it. Knowing the certain tools that you'll need to be able to do it. Again, don't open up a can of worms if you're not ready to clean it up. If you're not ready to do whatever is necessary. Um, a lot of people, they do that. They, they, they'll they open up a can of worms and then they're just kind of like waiting for you to like, now that I've opened this, what are you going to do about it? Like, and it's like, nobody told you to open that, fam. <laughs> but if you're deciding to open up a can of worms, then I suggest that, you know, now you, uh, you just have, the, you, you, you devote the time and the energy to be able to now clean it up and do whatever it is that you have to do with that. Um, get into the nitty gritty. Don't just sweep things under the rug. Figure out what's going on, what's causing the conflict, and how can we address it? How can we resolve this conflict once and for all? How, what, what are some ways that we can be able to um, actually tackle it head on? And then in the future, both parties can probably start practicing certain things of this nature and that nature. That way, we don't have to have any more fights. So even though peacemaking is a lot more work than peacekeeping maybe at the end of the day it's the same amount of work it's just that you've done all the work in one sitting and now you don't have to deal with it anymore because everything was resolved whereas maybe like with peacekeeping it's like you always have to be on alert now to be able to like oh shoot something's about to happen like oh man um i just left so and so alone together in the kitchen should I go back there and watch? And it's maybe maybe actually peacekeeping is more work than peacemaking because you're always alert and you're always like trying to like keep things down. Why not just nip it in the bud? Resolve the issue and then you don't have to worry about it no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time <laughs> to be stressing about such things. I don't know about y'all, but I just don't. So I'm going to try to peacemake whenever I can. Um, yeah, but again... Have discernment for if you have the energy, the time, the tools, supplies, all of that necessary to be able to deal with these situations. <sighs> yeah, so that's what was on my heart today to share with y'all. Um, let me know if y'all have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, if you want some more help with this, hit me up. Um, I have coaching, you know, as y'all might know. Uh, all of the details for that are in the description box below. Also, feel free to join Ponder Palace, um, which is my group chat uh, for my subscribers and some of my clients. It's on Telegram, the Telegram app. If you email me with the subject Telegram, my email is in the description below as well. Um, and you just say that you'd like to be part of Ponder Palace. Um, I will send you the link and you can get it popping. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all right now. Thanks for watching and hope that you guys are able to, uh, be able to now tell the difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper and you can start making that transition toward peacemaking. Done. Hey, I just wanted to briefly thank you for taking the time to watch this video, whether it was on regular speed or two times speed, whatever it was, just thank you for consuming the content. And around me, you should be able to see a few little buttons and logos for other recommended videos because, you know, I make good content and new ones, but then I also have some really good old content too that you should probably check out. Um, but make sure that if you really like this video, um, feel free to subscribe, to share. Um, it really helps this humble channel to expand and reach more people and ultimately help more people. So once again, thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day.